Hi, thanks for coming back. Today we're going to talk about the post-classical East Asian satellites. And what I mean by that are the societies that surrounded the center, the Chinese center that we talked about last time, but were not necessarily part of the Si Tang or Song dynasties, but they were still influenced by those dynasties. And we can start off with this map and you can see this purple line kind of represents the influence that the Tang dynasty especially had on the area around it. We're going to look at three different places today. First, Koryo, Korea. Second, the Bakufu of Japan, and there are a bunch of Bakufu there. And finally, post-classical Vietnam, which is a really interesting story of an interaction of two places. And in each of those three places, we're going to see how Chinese influence interacted with local culture and other cultures to produce really fabulous cultural, societal, and political developments. Uh, for example, in Korea, you had the development, the rise of the Koryo Celadon, some of the most beautiful pot pottery in history, was a combination of a Chinese technique that was taken to a whole new level by Korean potters. Incredible stuff. Look how beautiful that is. Or this, this is the Byodoin Temple in Japan, which takes, again, Chinese architectural styles, adds some Japanese flair, and really reaches a, a whole other level. Not to mention that, since it's a Buddhist temple, it also combines aspects of culture from South Asia. Another example from Vietnam is poetry, which sometimes used Chinese language, Chinese characters, or Chinese forms, but had distinctly Vietnamese content. Sometimes as far as going to write a poem in Chinese style, arguing for fighting against the Chinese and fighting against Chinese influence. So three really exciting places. Let's dive in. First, we're going to Koryo, Korea, which lasted from 918 when the, the final fall and dissolution of the previous Shila dynasty until 1392 with the beginning of the Chosun dynasty. In that case, the Koryo ended because of a um, peasant revolt. And again, in each one of these places, we're going to look at how it was influenced by China and how it developed some other things. So first of all, the connection of Koryo to China was stronger probably than either of the other two states we're going to study today. And one of the, the way that was officially made was with what's called the tribute system. This is a picture, I believe, of a Tibetan going and giving tribute to the Chinese emperor. This is a Tang emperor here. And that was common for many of the states that lay outside of Chinese territory to come and give tribute, bow to the emperor, and in return, they would maintain safe relationships with, with the Chinese state and also trade relationships with the Chinese state. So Koryo, Korea, as well as Shila, uh, had a very close tributary relationship with China. For instance, we talk about Chinese developing moving type, but, ac but actually Koryo, Korea added an important aspect of that technology that really allowed it to be used feasibly and regularly in China as well. Nearby in Japan, uh, we're talking about a series of bakufu. Bakufu essentially means rule by the military. That happened after the rule by the emperor's court in the Nara and Heian periods. And this is a period that lasts from 1185 in the Kam with the Kamakura period to 1867 with the Meiji Restoration, so a long period. They're not all ruled by the same Bakufu. There are a couple changes of Bakufu and some periods of disunity, but the Bakufu have similar structures, so we're going to group them together in, at this point. And this is the time of the samurai. Uh, this is one of my favorite samurai stories, the beginning of Yoshitsune and Benkei, two great warriors. But uh, the key thing is that these samurai, they are a high social class, they are also the warriors, and they also have political control during this period. But this period of time is also a great period of art artistic development. And just as in Korea with Celadon or with the movable type, Japan adopted Chinese styles and then took them in, other, in new directions. And this painting by a, brush, a famous brush painter named Seshu is just incredible. It was done during the 1500s and yet has an incredibly modern style with a lot of movement, big brush strokes, and still very evocative of the landscape that it claims to be. So Japanese art at this time, though influenced with China by China, also was in a state of incredible development. Finally, I want to introduce a little bit about Vietnam during this period. Uh, and the post-classical Vietnam that we're talking about lasts from 939 when 
they kick out China to the 19th century when they had to deal with French invasion and colonization. And during that entire time, Vietnam was ruled by local Vietnamese dynasties. Again, with the Japanese, there were, some, there were different dynasties at different times, but all of the dynasties were local and Vietnamese. And just as in the other states, we you see a very strong influence from China. In this case, this is the uh, entrance to the Nguyen capital, which is from northern Vietnam. And you can see really strong connections here with Chinese imperial architecture, especially with the imperial city, the forbidden city, those kind of things. Even down to the color of the roof tiles, uh, gold tiles symbolize royal buildings. But an interesting thing is that you also see quite a lot of Indian influence. Not only is Vietnam uh, a traditionally Buddhist country, much stronger influence of Buddhism there than in China, but also this is from the Mai Son Hindu temple complex, which is also within the borders of modern Vietnam, and shows that uh, Southeast Asia in general has a contrast of influences from China and India. And those are both influence and both play a, a, a big role in post-classical Vietnam. So the point I want to make with all of this, what I want you to take away from this, is that China had a very significant influence on the states that surrounded it. Just as we saw the Umayyad and Abbasid caliphates had a very strong and significant influence on the states that surrounded them. But just as with the Muslim world, China did not dominate these states. These states took what they could from China, took what they thought would be advantageous, some of the architectural styles, sometimes agricultural techniques or pottery or other technology, but they were not dominated by Chinese culture. They mo modified and developed Chinese culture to suit their own needs and their own cultures. And that kind of syncretic development is what we see what's most common. So when we're studying this, we want to keep that idea in mind, that this is a syncretic de development and not a development of domination of China in these areas, but of these areas taking what they were interested in in China and making it part of their own culture. And that's one of the reasons that we are so lucky to be able to experience Korean culture today. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.